Hello everyone, welcome back. We are here at the 20, 2022 Comic Con. And we're here to take, take you, all of you, with us. And have fun watching this year's Comic Con. So stay tuned for more. charge him to, to sign? A lot. Fair enough. It was like, a lot. And my agent was there and he helped. A lot. And it was before COVID. And let me tell you, I was all over that hand sanitizer. the iconic character, that's the beginning. I, you know, that's the, uh, in 40 countries and 90 languages around the world, this is where the show aired. The Red Ranger, without explanation, you put the picture up, and everyone in the world knows what that is. Without explanation. So the Red Ranger suit is, is a global icon. The Gold Ranger suit was a ton of fun. It was awesome. I loved all the bling. It looked cooler. And actually, it's the most powerful ranger they ever created. Because they took three, the power from three other rangers and then put it into Jason. And Jason had the power of three rangers at one time. No other ranger in the history of the show has had that. So he's hands down. He was the trifecta all by himself. Um, so the gold ranger, I think, was the most powerful. But the Red Ranger is, he's the global icon. So I, I think that's, I don't know that I could pick one. Jason, whether he was red or gold, was never defeated. He was the only Ranger, as far as I know, in the history of the show to fight a monster unmorphed, without any powers, while in a prison. He's the only Ranger to defeat Tommy. <laughs> he knows, he knows. Um, so, you know, Jason as a character is a one and done. Nobody else is, no, nobody else has some of those very same accomplishments. I think Jason's pretty special, but I love both suits. Fair enough. Good question. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of Power Rangers merchandise? And if so, what is it? Oh, there's so much. <laughs> or any of them, yeah, just one of your favorites. You gotta love these questions. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I'm just I'm thinking because every year, you know, Hasbro is releasing more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> Did I mention more? Yeah. So it's hard to keep track of all of it. I think if I had to, and and next week I could give you a totally different answer. I don't know, but right now, the very original. Red Ranger toy from 93, I think, is when it was released. That's the one I was sitting on set. I was 18. A producer came down, put it in my hand, and that was the first time I'd held myself in my hand in a not weird way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I twisted it. I was just talking about going to the bathroom, okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. So anyway, that would probably be it. My other favorite would probably be the uh, Pop 23 Funko, the original first one, because now they're like, it was just the first one I saw, so it's kind of cool. Thank you. You kind of love, like, seeing yourself as a, as a, as a miniature, like, I mean, that's, that's incredible. Like, At 18, can yeah. you imagine? The producer comes down and he's like, 
Osteen. He was he was uh, Jewish. He was like, Osteen, take a look, here is your toy. This that's that's me. That's me. Look, that's my face! By the way, I hate the picture, why didn't you ask me? That could literally be my high school like photo. It was so terrible. But it was it was pretty cool. How about this guy over here? And this is where I'll piss some people off. Others will be all for it. Because um, as much as we, we talk about living in a world without discrimination, there's something that people just discriminate against. So number one, I believe in God. And I'm Catholic. And that is number one, I think, the greatest role model for me to find a way to live, execute my life, humility at a massive scale in, the, in his story. And um, humility, honor, integrity, perseverance off the charts, whether you believe the story or not, it's incredible. So that would be a big one for me. Next would be my parents. My mom and dad were both walk soft but carried very big sticks. <laughs> And that was kind of what I modeled Jason after. If you think back to the episodes, Jason, he was always even keeled. He was never angry, he never raw, that was never his deal. He was very even keeled. He never bucked in or bowed down to Balkan Skull, he was even keeled. He didn't even get angry at him. Sometimes you just look at him like your mom looks at you when you make a mistake. But other than that, Jason was always kind of here. He was the, the rock for the team. And I got that from my parents. There's one occasion where Jason would break all that off. And that was when everything that could be done to keep the situation from escalating was over. And it was time to go to war. And that's when he said, it's morphin' time. And that's, it's morphin' time. It wasn't a statement. It wasn't a request. It was a battle cry. It was his war cry. And that was him letting everyone know the game is now, it's now up, the gloves come off. So I got a lot of that from my parents who could walk into a room and take command many times without saying a word. They were the people, they weren't big, they weren't imposing, but they always ruled gently, sometimes without people even knowing, because they didn't need to impose their will on others. So that is some of where I got it. And then as far as TV guys, if that's the question you're asking. Man, I grew up watching Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris was just like the dude, right? Like, it just, it, he was not a great actor. Which is why he has the world's best one-liners. Because everything was one or two lines, you know? And uh, so, Lone Wolf, McQuaid, Invasion, USA, Braddock, 1, 2, and 25. You know, those were awesome. Uh, I thought they were great. Bruce Lee, uh, Michelle Lee, from all the, the Drunken Master movies and Kung Fu Masters, Jackie Chan, incredible martial artist, did his own stunts, which is why I did mine, uh, every opportunity I could. So it, guys like that as far as TV goes. Uh, and if you don't know who Michelle Lee is, she's actually in the short film, Black Salt, that uh, I did not film, but now I'm hoping to be involved with the film, the new film coming up soon. She is incredible incredible but she tends to get overshadowed a lot by a lot of the guys in the martial arts arena you should check out michelle lee she's incredible so anyway those were that's some of how i uh, i shaped my life shaped my characters and my own core values and morals and i will tell you this i don't care what you're doing in the world i don't care what career you're after not that i don't care but what i'm saying is is that whatever your career is if your career is being a mom, or being a dad, or being a supporter of your family, in whatever the best fashion 
you can do it. There will always be someone who is willing to take more from you than you want to give in exchange or take something from you in exchange for you giving up some form of your, your morals or your ethics. There's always someone that's going to take that from you if you'll give it to them. Don't give it to them. Ever. There are two things you leave in the world when you die. Anybody know what those are? What is it, big man? That's a really good guess. So a legacy, the way I explain it, is you leave your name and you leave your reputation. Your name is going to be on your tombstone. It will be on the minds and tongues of loved ones and family members. But your reputation is something you spend your whole life making. And creating that reputation is going to be based on a couple of things. So you guys are going to forget a lot of what I said now, 20 minutes after I walk out this door. You're going to forget a lot of what I've done not 25 minutes after you walk out this door. But the reason you are all here today is because you remember one thing. And that was how myself and my castmates made you feel. How you make people feel is what they will never, ever forget. And that will lead to your legacy and your reputation. Do people feel like you're a good man or a good woman? Or do they like you but think you're a dirtbag? That's what you're going to leave behind, your name and your reputation. So don't exchange who you are and what you believe in for others. It's not worth it. You believe in what you are. Believe in what's important. And then those that can work with that are good people. Those that can't work with that might be good people, but they don't need to be your people. Move on. That's awesome. I have a question, Megan. Well, first and foremost, I've got to say thank you so much for giving your weekend to us. I know you're making a lot of dreams come true for a lot of fans, including myself. Um, one question I do have, um, as we already know, this one might be a sensitive topic, so if you do want to pass on, you can. But in the early 2000s, as we already know, the original Yellow Ranger passed away. Since for the fans never really got the opportunity to ever get a chance to meet her, can you tell us a little bit more about Trini as a side of the Power Ranger? Who, what was she like on set of uh, Mighty Morphin? Did you guys all hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Trini. He wanted me to, Trini passed away in two, early 2000s, and he wanted me to talk about her outside of the show. All right, here's one for you. When my mom was a cop in the 1970s, her own police force tried to have her killed because women didn't belong. They literally tried to have her killed. That's women in the workforce in the 70s. Right? Police was a man's thing back then, and that's the way it should be. Twee came over, 80s, not too far after that. Today we're all about equality and, and empowerment and women doing whatever they're capable of doing and being paid equally and treated with respect because they have the ability to earn it, just like a man, right? So Twee came over in the 80s with her mom in the belly of a boat from Vietnam. And it was a long, terrible story. I can never remember whether it was her that almost died of dehydration and everybody wanted to throw her overboard or if it was her mom that was dying of dehydration and everybody wanted to throw her mom overboard. But the point is that one fought for the other in the belly of a boat, no toilets. So I can tell you in the heat, with all of the human fluids around, what a terrible environment that was, right? We are not talking Disney cruises here. They survived that trip, which was epic. She makes it to America as a little one. No English. She learned English by watching TV. Got her degrees, went through high school. And then guess what she did with her college career? She got a degree in engineering. Crazy, right? Amazing. And here, at, well, I won't speak here, I'm in Canada. In America, we have so many people griping about what's not given to them, 
about what governments owe them, about how terrible life is. And this little girl came to the country, learned English, worked her way through school. No excuses. No, the world is, is nobody's fault. She got herself through college and picked up an engineering degree. Engineering is, I mean, I have two degrees, but not one in engineering. Like, that's, whew, that's some stuff right there, right? She was the nicest person. She was sweet. She was very intelligent. She was compassionate. And uh, she always had time for others. And uh, I loved her like a sister. So Twee is someone that didn't just create a legacy on TV. She is a woman that is a role model, I feel, for a lot of women today that need to see under extremely terrible conditions. Because she, when she got here, she wasn't rich either. So she had to earn her way through college with the grades. And uh, that was back before everybody was, was working hard on equality. And uh, she did it. And uh, that is, that's a legacy for everybody, but especially for, I feel like, women today. It can be done, you can do it, and to hell with what everybody else thinks. I want to thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Thank you. I think we've got time for uh, one more question. Have we asked this uh, person here? Hi, Jason. I just met them before. I just really love your series so much. For uh, almost 30 years, you're the most favorite Red Ranger of most of popular of all time. It is you. And I saw the Beast Morphers, the first crossover of you. Um, well, my question is, what's the most experience in this first crossover, the Beast Morpher series? Can you just explain how's the most favorite moments of the series before what in the future might be in the next crossover movie? So as far as the future crossovers, I don't know. Yeah. Um, when they write them, well, I still won't be able to tell you because they'll probably put me under a non-disclosure. But when they come out, you'll probably think it's cool. <laughs> um, as far as favorite moments, I mean, I got to meet 28 years, 27 years later, I got to meet the new guys, you know, who I was stunned. They reminded me of me. I was like, wow. And they were all still, I think one or two might have been 18, so they were in my zone. And uh, they're filming in New Zealand. How many, anybody been to New Zealand? It's freaking amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, any, any, anybody in here a runner? <laughs> Try running on the hills in Auckland. That'll, uh, that'll wreck your world right there. I went from doing about eight miles to doing like three in those hills. That was straight up. That was crazy. So, um, I got to, to meet the new cast, I got to feel their energy, I got to see a couple of the older guys. Here's another story about what you can and can't do. One of the guys on set was the executive producer. When I filmed with them 27 years prior, he was a coffee getter, he was a PA. And he rose all the way to the top. So anyway, uh, it, it was great to see some of the few guys from back in my day. And uh, it was great to see the new guys and feel that energy and see that they were having some of the same struggles that uh, that I had had, and it was it was awesome. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's great. Amazing. You know, I feel like it's all this time. I think we over TikTok <laughs> making a best Power Rangers morphers of over like um, six million viewers are doing morphing sequence. I blew on my TikTok like long time to 255. I have over 160k followers. My TikTok experience, and um, from my experience, I thought it's just this great an idea to make this best. To make the um, market signature do thing go up with you, if I wish I so say so, but I feel like I really enjoy it for your series. But congrats for almost 30 years, Power Rangers. And surrender 30 years ago before you guys have been approaching the first adopted. Like I feel like I'm so <sighs> vibration and so happy for you to see you. I'm so my favorite person all time. That was you all the time. Thank you. And we're going to take that out on a high note. That's just thank, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've had a lot of fun, so let's express some gratitude and some, uh, some thankfulness. Give it up, please. I love making your childhood. It's awesome. Thank you for making my whole career. More <laughs>